This video is sponsored by MCRU, manufacturers of the mains distribution block and power cords used by a British audiophile. For more information, click the link in the description and use discount code BA10 for 10% off your order. I haven't given up on reviewing accessibly priced gear, but I have a few speakers and amplifiers in at the moment that are towards the top end of what I tend to review, you know, five to 10 grand and it makes sense to have them in at the same time so I can do comparisons between them. I didn't get these grey hairs for nothing. The Kerr Acoustics K300 Mark III transmission line speakers are in. They retail for £6,395, featuring a pure ribbon tweeter and the legendary ScanSpeak Revelator midwoofer. Trilogy Audio is another brand that you're unlikely to have heard of, but it's well regarded in UK high-end audio circles by people in the know. The new 921 integrated amplifier brings ownership of that brand crashing down from the previous £17,000 to a whisker under £6,000. Now these products may represent the top end of what I tend to review, but they're the entry point for these brands. And that's interesting because they have trickle down technology from products that retail for multiples more. That's the case with Alta Audio, whose speakers I'm reviewing today. Take a look at their titanium Hestia floor standards that retail for £37,500. You'll recognise the ribbon tweeter and mid-range unit when you see the £5,000 stand mounts in a moment. So the question I asked myself was, in this price category, am I better off putting my money into brands that normally occupy more rarefied air or sticking with household names, you know, the brands that I and I'm sure most of you consider to be hi-fi bread and butter? I'll answer my own question. It's difficult to generalize. It has to be taken on a case by case basis. So let me start with Alter Audio. New York based Alter Audio sell their entry level Alyssa stand mount speakers for £5,000 in the UK. For that, you get the standard gloss black finish, which is a nightmare to photograph. There are a couple of lovely wood finishes available that will set you back £6,000 and you can specify custom finishes for £7,795. The picture here also shows the Alec floor stander that retails for £9,000 to £12,000 depending on the finish. I can't help thinking that maybe designer founder of the company Michael Levy is a Star Wars fan. Visual comparisons between the Black Alyssas and Darth Vader's helmet seem striking. The base of the speaker measures 244 by 362 millimeters and the speaker stands 368 millimeters high. That's 9.6 by 14.25 by 14.5 inches. It's a hefty sucker at 12.7 kilograms or 28 pounds. The mid-range and base is taken care of by a custom-made Morel driver with a 150 millimeter 6 inch cone made from an injected damped polymer composite. Another custom-built top-quality driver takes care of the highs, a 50mm 2-inch pure metal foil ribbon tweeter from Fantec. There are one set of speaker binding posts, but don't be fooled by the aperture at the back. This is no ordinary bass reflex speaker, but a hybrid between a transmission line and a ported design. More information coming in the tech section. So what's the big deal about a pure ribbon tweeter? Well, it's the lightest and fastest tweeter there is. And that's what you want in order to produce clean highs. Integration can be a problem with conventional dome drivers further down the frequency range due to having different dispersion characteristics. But that's where the skill of the designer comes in. It shouldn't be confused with an AMT or air motion transformer, also sometimes referred to as a folded ribbon. AMTs normally have a metal trace etched to a thin layer of PET, polyethylene terephthalate. The folded diaphragm is placed in front of strong magnets, usually neodymium. As the signal passes through the trace, it changes direction by 180 degrees in accordance with the folds, causing the diaphragm to squeeze in and out like an accordion, hence pushing sound waves out to the listener. AMTs are generally faster than dome drivers due to less moving mass, but a pure ribbon driver is lighter and faster still. There's no PET layer, just a metal film, normally aluminium, as is the case with the Fantec tweeter in the Alyssas. It's secured at the top and the bottom, but free to move in the middle. 
The ribbon is usually suspended between two strong neodymium magnets so that it will move when a current passes through it consistent with Michael Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. The custom moral midwoofer in the Lessers is also supposed to be a little bit special. It has a titanium former, that's the bit that the voice call wraps around. The moral driver is supposed to offer higher stiffness, lower weight, better power handling and lower magnetic interference than conventional designs. The 3.1 inch voice call sits in a ferrite neodymium hybrid motor structure, all held in a cast magnesium basket. The hybrid base loading is a little unusual. Outer Audio keep the exact details close to their chest, which is understandable they don't want other people copying the design, but their XTL system is supposed to combine the best characteristics of a ported and transmission line design. Basically, it works like a conventional ported design above the resonant frequency of the tuned system and as a transmission line below it. It's the reason why the ELISAs are specified to dig down to 32 Hz at minus 3 dB anechoically. That's quite remarkable for a stand mount speaker. The faceplate is made from a proprietary material called damp hard. It's obviously hidden by the painted finish, but it's a multi-layered, multi-density compound. Combined with the sculptured cabinets, it reduces the need for internal damping material. According to Alta Audio, by relying on less internal damping material, the dynamics of the speaker improve. Well, I guess it's about time to find out. Let me give you some context. For the last 25 years, my reference speakers have been my Proact Response 1SCs. That is a bit of an irritation to me now, because I know that you can't simply go out and buy them. The modern day equivalents are the DB1s that retail for £2,550. I've heard them many times and I can tell you that they are good speakers. But it isn't a given that they're better than my 1SCs. Sometimes parts and materials become unavailable and things don't always move forward. What I can tell you is the model that came between the 1SCs and the DB1s was a disaster for PROAC. Anyway. Getting the DB1s home has proved elusive and I can't simply ditch my 1SCs until I find something better. Over the years, there have been speakers where I preferred aspects of the sound to my Proax, but overall, no. The ATC SEM 19s have a tighter bass and a less coloured midrange, but they aren't quite as revealing on top and don't play as well at low listening levels. The Neat Petite Classics are more detailed and remarkably image and soundstage slightly better but they don't have that rich mid-range that's associated with the best British monitors. I could go on, but I'm sure you get the picture. The Outer Audio Lessers are the first speakers I've reviewed in over four years of running this channel, where I prefer the sound across the board to my Proax. The bass may not have the visceral impact of the best floor-standing transmission line speakers, but its deep, clean extension with exceptional note-to-note -note definition delivers on what the design promises. The mid-range has all the tonal richness, texture and timbre of the finest British monitors. They're easily a match for my Proax, but the background's even quieter, allowing instruments to be better separated. The soundstage is wider and deeper. I've only experienced the boundaries of my room disappear like this once before. And if you give me a minute, I'll get to that. None of this would be possible if the tweeter couldn't retain timing information perfectly. Sometimes ribbon tweeters can sound a bit razor etched, but there's nothing sharp here, and integration with the mid-range is superb. As for comparisons, there's only two worth mentioning, because all the others that I reviewed over the past four years fall somewhere behind these two. Up to now, the £5,199 Dali Epicon 2s have been the most revealing speakers I've auditioned in my home. They're the other speakers that have made my room disappear the way the Elissas do. I can't tell you if the Epicon 2s or the Elissas are more detailed. That's too close to call without having them both here at the same time. What I can tell you is they both have a beautifully natural sounding mid-range and they're different dynamically. The Epicon 2s are a little bit polite. There's none of that with the Elissas. The cleanest, deepest bass I've heard in my room was produced by the Pearl Acoustic Sibelius speakers. Their Voigt pipe enclosure is similar to a transmission line and superbly implemented in Harley's design. The Pearls are bass kings because of their weight, definition and authority, 
but the elicers are tiny in comparison and for them to play as clean and almost as deep is quite remarkable. Yeah, all in all we're talking about some very special speakers here. The outer audio elicers have quite a big footprint. You're going to need stands that are quite heavy and with a decent sized top plate to stop them from toppling over. The UK distributors supply stands at no additional cost, which is very generous. They have the correct size top plate to accommodate spikes that can be fitted to the bottom of the elicers to provide a stable platform. The supplied stands are actually pretty good, but for the purposes of this review, I stuck with my target R4s. They're a little bit sturdy in construction, plus they're lead filled, so they're not budging. If I was getting these speakers, I'd probably get custom top plates for my target R4s. These outer audio speakers were very easy to accommodate in my room. There was nothing lacking, but they don't throw out loads of bass, so I didn't have to wrestle for positioning. Just a little bit of toe-in helped to focus the soundstage. As for partner equipment, the Elissas aren't particularly sensitive. They're rated at 87.5 dB, but that is into a 4 ohm load. Despite that, all the amplifiers that I hooked up to them had no trouble driving them. My Hegel H190 is what I'd consider an appropriate starting point for the Elissas. It's such a well-rounded amplifier that it just simply gets out of the way and lets the outer audio speakers do their thing. Thomas's Galleon TS120 SE amplifier running in Class A and Sound Mode B, that's the low feedback setting, will give you more detail and a deeper soundstage than the Hegel. With the stock PS Vane tubes, the TS120 SE can sound a little bit bright in that setting, but I still think you need to stick with Class A mode of operation and Sound Profile B to hear the Galleon at its best. I just like to do a bit of tube rolling to bring that top end down a bit. The Elissas sounded glorious with my vintage Exposure 21 Pre and 18 Super Monoblocks. Now there was real richness and body to the vocals and instruments, and the soundstage was huge. The new Trilogy 9 to 1 integrated amp was also a really nice pairing, but I don't want to give anything away here. You're going to have to wait for the review to find out how that fared. The Elissas just need quality equipment to show off their attributes, but I do see them working with a lot of setups. The outer audio lessers are superbly built speakers, an exceptional design that offers wonderful resolution across the frequency range, impressive extension and dynamics, and a tonality that showcases the artistry of performers. I love what I do and it never gets any better than when I find something new that offers exceptional performance. I have no caveats here, nothing. Sure, there's going to be bigger speakers that will play louder and give you more bass, and the looks may not appeal to everybody, but I'd ask you to judge them in the flesh. The pictures don't do them justice. Other than that, there's nothing that I can criticize. These are the best speakers that I reviewed to date. The outer audio elicers get an outstanding from this channel. Over the past 25 years, my Proud Response One SEs have been my constant companion. They have a special place in my heart. And I don't think I'll ever sell them, but I think I'm about to open a new chapter here. And that brings me on to my question for today. What are the products that you hold dear and the reasons why? Please let me know in the comment section. All that remains for me to say is if you like this video, you like what I'm doing with this channel, you wanna see it grow, and assuming you haven't done so already, please like, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Check me out on Patreon. There's a couple of consultancy tiers you can access there if you think I can help you on your audiophile journey. Also check out the ABA Club on Patreon, which has some great ways to interact with me and fellow Patreons. But for today, for now, British Audio File, signing off.